Right, well, I still can't really believe it, but turf is down. Went down late yesterday afternoon after a full two days of repairing washed out sand, getting it ready, and there was a lot of a lot of periods of time there I didn't quite think I'd get it done in time to lay turf, but it uh, it all came together. Had a great bunch of mates that came around to give me a hand, and it made life so much easier. Today, well, actually this morning, so the next morning, I thought I'd just take the opportunity with this small patch here behind me to show you guys the steps involved to laying a successful new lawn at home. So the variety that I've chosen to go with is Tiff Tough. Now, a lot of talk about Tiff Tough at the moment and uh, I've been really keen to try it. Now, one of the main reasons I've gone this way, uh, for those of you who've been following the channel for a while, I do have Santa Ana Cooch on my other front lawn. And on a whole, it's been a fantastic lawn. But one of the key things that I notice about it, as far as cooches go, it appears to be the first cooch grass to start wilting when things get hot. Now, we've had a cooler season this year, and in times gone by, by now, in January like this, we're into the 40s quite regularly. This year, we've been struggling to get into the mid 30s, so it's a much cooler season. That grass does get a little bit thirsty for cooch. There's obviously still quite good drought resistance there, but Tiff Tough takes it one step further. So it actually has earned itself the, uh, the water efficiency mark and it's actually the only grass in Australia to get that. So I get the benefit of having a really drought tolerant lawn. I still get to cut it really short. It's gonna look very, very similar to the Santa Ana, uh, but I've got the potential to save some water. So that's a good thing. Now, preparation is the key. There's no doubt about the more time you spend preparing an area, the more it's gonna reward you. Now, as I said, for those of you who've been watching for a while, you know that I've got a good amount of sand here, probably, four to six inches, so 10, 10 12, 13, 14 centimeters thereabouts. Um, and I spent the time leveling it out, raking it out, and got it just how I want it in time for the turf. So preparation number one, make sure you prepare the ground really, really well. Number two, make sure you're applying a really good turf starter fertilizer. So what I'm using here, um, because I'm going with the Lawn Solutions Australia product, Tiff Tuck is available through Lawn Solutions Australia and my local turf farm that supplied it was New Lawn Turf based in Tamworth. So big shout out to all you guys involved. Thank you very much. So we're going with the Lawn Launcher. It's a um, Lawn Solutions product and it actually has um, water crystals involved. So when this stuff gets wet, it's got little jelly crystals that come, um, that sort of, uh, what would you say, appear? No. Or, Granules in here transform into little water crystals, as well as having some fertilizer in here. So it's got a good amount of fertilizer, just what you need to start off a new lawn. So obviously first step is to chuck this stuff out, uh, and then we'll give it a light rake, just to rake it through the top few centimeters of the sand, uh, and then we can actually start getting onto some turfing. So it's really important that we get a nice even application, and you saw there, I just filled in a few of the areas there on the corners that I wasn't satisfied that the spread had got well. Because it's only a narrow area, I was really particular about not getting too much of that stuff on the concrete to avoid wastage. I mean, sure, you can sweep it back in, but if I can sort of do my best not to, not to have to, then that's great. So as I said, what we're gonna do now is give it a really light rake in. Uh, we don't wanna disturb our levels too much. We just wanna mix that fertilizer through the soil um, just a little bit. Okay, so when you're laying out turf, it's important that you always try to use a straight edge if possible. So I'm, in this case, I'm gonna use this pathway here. So we're gonna lay our full rolls out all the way along. Now, our second roll I'll show you in a minute, ideally should be laid in a brick pattern. So it should be slightly offset. So I'll actually cut one roll in half and then that'll give us a staggered brick pattern. But I'll show you that as we go along. When you're rolling out turf, just take your time. If you want and you've got a large area like I've got, grab a few mates together, um, put on a barbecue, and I'm sure people will be happy with that. But just take your time, preparations, everything, because the last thing you want to do is rush it down and then be unhappy with it. So my advice is take your time, get it right the first time. Yeah. 
So we've done our first row and we'll trim up some bits at the end, but we've done our first row. Now it's time to do our second row. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna offset this. So we're gonna roll it out as usual, but then we're gonna fold it back on itself and cut it in half. And that'll give us a brick pattern effect uh, when we lay the turf. And that'll just sort of help it all knit in a lot nicer and a lot neater and stop any potential water tracks coming through and washing out and that kind of thing. So all we're doing is rolling it out uh, as we would the first roll. Like so, then we're gonna fold him back. Then we're just gonna cut him straight along here. And what I'm gonna use for that is, where I can find them, are some hedging shears. So if you've got a really good pair of shears, maybe just buy a cheap set, or if you don't really care about your hedging shears, use the one you've got. So we've got that done there now. Probably use this bit down the other end. So now when we lay out our next roll, we're gonna not get two joins line up over here. So once you've got your new turf down, so we've got it down, we've got it all cut in, we've trimmed around our sprinklers, and uh, we're basically ready to put the water on. Before we do that, we're just gonna roll over it once or twice. Now, the idea behind rolling the grass is we don't actually wanna level it out. We just wanna make sure that all the rolls of turf have been sort of, I guess, pushed down and made contact with the soil beneath it. So we're not looking to, to level a surface. That's not what this is about. It's just about to smooth out the wrinkles, if you will and just ensure that all those roots on the bottom of the rolls of turf are touching the ground in the way they should be, just to ensure that that turf gets a best, the best head start it possibly can. So once we do that, we're gonna turn the water on now. It's really, really important to get water onto this as soon as you can. Uh, obviously, if you're laying out a huge area on a really, really hot day, you're probably better off starting to water sections at a time. I've been sort of blessed, believe it or not, got another cloudy start. It hasn't been really hot. So yesterday I was able to lay the whole lot, having the numbers of people I had, lay the whole lot and then put water on. When you're watering in new turf, it's best to probably do it three, three to maybe four times a day, depending on the temperatures. At the moment, the way we're going here, I'm just doing morning, lunch and afternoon, and that will be enough. But if it's extra hot, you might want to throw that extra water in. So the concept behind it is, we're just going to keep the uh, grass damp or moist at all times. We're not allowing it to dry out at all during the establishment phase and we'll keep that up for about a week. Then we'll slowly start cutting it back to maybe twice a day and so on. We start weaning it off the water until the roots establish down deep enough that we can go back to, we'll go start our regular watering patterns. So uh, I've actually recently installed a new irrigation controller which is a Hunter Pro HC and I'm actually able to uh, drive it from my phone which is a really handy feature. 
So I'll actually do a video on that in the coming weeks. But yeah, anyway guys, look, hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Have a fantastic weekend. Catch you here next time on the Aussie Lawn. Well, if you stuck around this long, I'll give you a little bit of an update. We're six days in and I'm really, really amazed at how well this grass has actually managed to take root and uh, basically start growing in already. Color starting to improve, although that being said, it didn't really lose color. It just looked a little bit dry for a couple of days and it's come good again, but it's rooting down, it's going really well. Now, earlier in the video, I said I was gonna be watering this uh, three times a day. I actually only needed to be watering it twice a day, so it's only been getting watered uh, in the morning and in the afternoon. That's all it's been getting, two, two times a day. And that is also a little bit to do with the fact that the weather, as I said, has been so cool. But look guys, look, we'll keep on with this in the coming weeks. We'll um, look at first cutting and when's the right time to cut and when's the right time to start dropping heights and doing all these sorts of things. Second application of fertilizer. So still plenty more content to come with this. Anyway guys, over and out this time. Have a great weekend. See you later.